Okay, if it's all right with everyone, we're gonna go ahead and get started and we'll just let people in from the waiting room as they um, check in this morning, uh, actually this afternoon now. Um, I'm Tracy Crum, I'm the Director for Artistic Advancement at Techdel Center and it's my pleasure to welcome Mayumi Amata for one of our Art Speaks sessions here on Zoom um, at the Textile Center. Um, Mayumi, uh, has been a practicing textile artist, uh, I'm gonna say for, for decades now. Um, she came to the US from Japan in 1998 as an ESL student and attended the University of Minnesota where she ended up um, working her way through the MFA program uh, in 2006. And along the way discovered uh, her love for textiles and fiber art as a major component to her studio practice. Um, her current work involves working environmentally in the landscape and recently work has focused on mortality and eternity and eternity in mortality. She explores themes such as repeated generations, ancestry and the cycle of life with a focus on the meaning of ephemeral life. Through her work, she hopes that viewers have a moment to think about their own lives and are motivated to consider what they want to or need to do to lead a fulfilling life. You can visit us at Textile Center uh, here right now through October 16th to see one of her small pieces in our Common Thread um, exhibition. So um, without further ado, I'm going to welcome Mayumi Amata and Mayumi, thank you so much for joining us today and we look forward to your presentation. If I can let the audience know, uh, we'd like to hold the questions until the end unless something pertinent seems to fill um, fit into the conversation seamlessly. Uh, and we're going to encourage you to please use the chat for your questions, and I will field them at the end by reading them aloud to the audience. Okay, so Mayumi, take it away. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, um, hi, this is Mayumi. And the easy way to remember my name is Mother's Ma and you and me, Mayumi, and I'm from Japan. And thank you for joining today. I'm so happy to have so many people here. And also want, want to say thank you to the Textile Center for giving me uh, this great opportunity. And when I was offered this uh, presentation, I said, yes, I want to do it. But later, I found it would be like paid program. So I was a little scared, but if you have a nice time with me and enjoy my presentation, I'm so happy. And uh, first I wanna uh, show, no, I'm sorry. I, I wanna talk about my background. I used to be a, a uh, truck and field athlete and became a um, uh, physical education teacher in Japan. But since my childhood, I loved uh, making something with my hands so much. And my grandmother taught me how to crochet. And it's the uh, very important technique I'm using to make my artwork. And um, okay, so I, the reason I came to the US was I was so tired as a physical education teacher and took uh, long holidays, took long, long holidays and came to refresh, came to the US to refresh myself. And uh, my original plan was just staying in the US for one year and uh, study English. But I found I could study art. So yeah, I took many art classes and uh, here I am now. And when I came to the United States, I looking looked for like uh, books 
cro crochet books because I didn't want to uh, buy uh, books. So this is, I was so surprised. This is uh, American like crochet book. And uh, um, everything is written by work. And it was so difficult for me to understand. Japanese crochet book, for example, this doily book has this kind of, can, I, I hope you can see, uh, this kind of diagrams. And, and I found several, uh, this, not several, uh, this book, Magic Crochet, it's old book, magazines, but it has it has diagram. So I collected uh, many of these magazines. It's not published anymore. So I went to uh, eBay and bought many of these magazines. And now I think I have I don't know sixty of these magazines. And uh, I also have Japanese crochet books. So totally, I think I have um, like more than 100 crochet books. And also I, in the US, I, I saw many uh, doilies at the antique shop. So I, bought many of these and I think I, I also have like more than 100 of this kind of uh, doilies. So this is my uh, important collection. And uh, I, okay, this is another Japanese book I really wanted to show. And this is, this has like blue, beautiful diagrams. Yes, everywhere. And I feel this book itself like art. And this book is my favorite book. And I want to introduce one more uh, interesting episode. Uh, usually I spend a lot of time to create concept and also finding materials or designs. But one work, I got good idea immediately. So I really wanted to make, start making immediately. And I found a good yarn, very appropriate yarn, nice color, nice uh, like boucle, it not very straight yarn. But I forgot to buy a crochet hook and the, the night, I wanted to start and I made this crochet uh, hook by myself, mm -hmm. carving. And what I used is, this is chops, chopsticks, chopstick. So I carved and I started making the artwork. I got, I got the idea, so I was so happy. This is, uh, this is my funny story. And I prepared a PowerPoint presentation today. So I want to move to my PowerPoint. And today's story, no, today's presentation is crochet and my doily story. Okay. Uh, okay. This is my first artwork I made uh, when I was undergrad student and I took metal casting class and this is a cast bronze but it was not so fun and I found really appropriate sized doily and I bought and I used and I didn't have any intention I just thought doily is beautiful and very nice with the bronze dark brown color so I used, and this is my officially, the first artwork is doily image. 
and then I found like meanings about doily, especially doilies. And everybody says, oh, I saw a doily at my grandma's place. And I felt for American people, doily equal grandmother's image. So I digged the meanings and uh, talked with my professor's friends and uh, tried to find the meaning uh, to doily. And uh, why I like doilies? Because it's beautiful, elegant, and delicate. And it's meaningful. And for making doilies, you have to make many stitches, different uh, kind of stitches. And the accumulation of many different stitches make the pattern and the pattern are repeated. And the crochet technique has been handed down for many, many generations for many years. And it, it has a, a round uh, circular form. So for me, it was so meaningful. And what I put in the, what kind of meaning I'm putting in my artwork or what I'm exploring with doilies are passage of time, mortality. And not only mortality, but eternity in mortality. And the life cycle, cycle of life, ancestry, and so on. This is what I'm working on now. And uh, Okay, when I was a grad student at the University of Minnesota, I, we went to Texas, Marfa, and that is a, a permanent installation site of Donald Judd. He is a minimalist, a pretty well-known uh, American artist, and uh, he created 100 aluminum boxes and it was put in a, a grass covered old building. And I was amazed by his artwork. It's quiet and uh, beautiful and made me really calm. And uh, I felt experienced. Experiencing the atmosphere is important. Just seeing the uh, photos um, is not the real, like uh, you cannot get the real feeling from the artwork. And uh, I uh, became very interested in uh, making like space. And I was amazed by his artwork. And, but also I saw this kind of really dried and huge Texas field too. And uh, it's stony, completely dried, like dead field. And suddenly I got the desire to, to, to decorate, okay, to decorate the stony huge field with large, doilies. So I thought I could change the scenery completely. And yeah, my first doily project started from here. And on my way back to Minnesota, I saw many lakes through airplane window. And oh, I'm living in Minnesota. So how about making like artwork that can decorate the lakes. So I decided to make big doilies that can float and can decorate the uh, lake, lakes. And uh, this is what I started. And uh, you will see the size. And uh, this is 
it, this is not the biggest, but one of the big, biggest, big, bigger toilets. And I needed to find the material. And it was not easy. First, I thought, okay, I really like white doilies. So I wanted to get something white and some that can float. But it was so difficult and went back to the original way to make a doily. And I found a rope that can float. It's for tying a boat or a canoe. And there are many sizes. And I bought the buoyant rope or floating rope and made many doilies. And now I see only four, but I totally, at that time, I made five toilets. And I don't know if I can start. Can you start the video? Yeah, this is the, uh, it's not so great image, image video, but this is what I made. The rope can float, so the doily can float. And it, the background look, looks completely black, but it, it was the surface of, of, of the lake. And uh, probably it was in the shade, so it looked completely black. And it officially, not officially, this is my first uh, artwork is Dolly Image. And the next, uh, when I was a grad student, one of my professors said, Okay, uh, okay, Miami always makes something like beautiful artwork, but only beautiful is not so interesting for me. <laughs> and I was told so. And I wanted to make something beautiful with very strange or eerie, eerie material. And uh, I found bones and I made like born doily. And my original idea was buy many bones and make real uh, doily. But because I didn't have enough money, I bought some and used mirror. So I think this idea was interesting. And only the front, like triangle shape, that only that part is the real uh, bone, and the other part around it is reflection of the uh, uh, mirrors. And on purpose, I chose like 45 degree angle to set the uh, mirror. It's pretty big, so that I could get eight re times repeated uh, doily uh, pattern. And this is the close-up photo. And the kind of center, there is a very round, small uh, bone, and it, it's a kneecap. And the side, like a bowl-like shape, is leaves. So it's a little strange. I created, but it's really simple. Uh, I tended to use a lot of time to make artwork, but th this was just an idea and uh, a very simple way I created, and uh, I like this artwork. Okay, next. Uh, this is the artwork uh, I made for the first time just after graduating uh, school. And I didn't have any access to facility facilities and didn't have enough uh, space. So I went back to the authentic way to make like crochet doily. But um, the doily says every, everybody dies. And the point is there is a mirror on the wall and the, the viewers see the mirror, their face, face in the mirror, then see the doily. And uh, um, then I showed this work 
the gallery attendant said, an old guy was really scared with this uh, artwork. And why you made this kind of strange artwork? I, I was told so. But this work is not negative work. And this is a very positive work. And uh, time is limited. So you need to think what you want to do while you are alive, or what you need to do while you are alive. This is kind of, that kind of message to viewers and also to myself. Okay, next, uh, at the time I was interested in making public artwork and wanted to make really big doilies to decorate outside of a wall of a building. But it's too huge. I didn't know how to make the big doilies. So this size is much smaller. It's too big, but uh, much smaller than my original thought. But I used plastic tarp or poly tarp and the transfer the design uh, I created to the tarp and uh, cut, cut out with a uh, cutter braid. And uh, it was also made at my small apartment room. And wh what I did was push, I pushed all the furniture, pieces of furniture to the wall of my small apartment and uh, stretched the tarp, white tarp, and nail and hammered a nail, hammered a nail in the center of the tarp. And from the nail, I stretched a string and with ballpoint pen, I made circle with different distance. And I made this like uh, concentric uh, pattern, concentric circle pattern uh, artwork. Uh, and it says the life of a flower is short. Uh, ours is as well. Ours is as well. Uh, it's the same as the crochet doily I made. Uh, it's, it, it might be thought as a little bit negative artwork, but uh, it's the same. It's really positive, positive artwork for me. And I made several uh, big tarp doilies after that. And this is pretty long and 13.5 uh, feet by 7.5 feet. And it's pretty long and it was too long and I couldn't uh, show or lift all the doily. So always this doily is uh, laid on the floor. The bottom part was laid on the floor, floor. But I thought it's also interesting. I use one spotlight and so I can get pretty clear image, no clear shadow. And the real doily and the shadow created like very complicated image on the floor. And I really like uh, this. And uh, I really liked this like flower or snowflakes like pattern very much. And this was um, from Hungarian crochet book. I, of course I altered a little bit, but I really liked this uh, pattern. And uh, yeah, this is another view. And uh, yeah, I got a chance to show my this doily at a landmark center uh, in St. Paul. And the doily is very old, kind of old stuff, technique or grammar, old stuff, image is old. And the building is also old. And I felt when I showed this artwork, 
I thought the doily was really happy in the old building, <laughs> appropriate like space in the appropriate space. And I use spotlight from back, sometimes from back, but sometimes from the front. And uh, I can manipulate the space, depend on the space. And uh, the reason I always use the light is doily is pretty flat, but with the shadow, I can create bigger space. And also you can fill the space. This is also from the uh, Landmark Center. And I said what I, I wanted to say it early, earlier, but I really like the pattern taken from the Hungarian crochet book. So when I got the chance to paint a piano, I used the same pattern. And the, the uh, middle part of a board, uh, I cut, same as the doily, I cut the board out. So it, when you uh, play the piano, you can see the uh, movement of the hammers. And uh, since, again, I really like this pattern, I used wearable artwork with the same pattern. And uh, the white fabric is left over from um, the big doily, not the doily, big artwork, and it's plastic. So it's not comfortable, but I really like wearing the same pattern dress when, when I show this doily. And this is my third big tarp doily. And uh, the first two had letters or sentences, words, but this doesn't have, but it has pretty <clears throat> deep meaning. Um, there is more than 100 skulls in this design. And uh, every, everything or everybody is my maternal ancestors. And uh, um, if I say one generation is 20 years, uh, this doily can go back more than 2,000 years of my ancestors. One doesn't have to be mine, but yeah, we have that kind of long, long uh, history of life and all the genes are in our body now. And I wanted to show my respect and the feeling of uh, thankness to my ancestors. So I gave a rose to each uh, skull of my ancestor. So it has pretty uh, deep meaning. And again, I used the uh, spotlight and this is the floor. And uh, it's pretty, I got pretty clear uh, shadow. And this is the same place, but yeah, I also got the shadow on the wall too. So this is not the only uh, big top doily, but I created the space with shadow. This is my fourth big top. Uh, I, I don't know if I can say doily, but um, inspired by uh, table runner, I created this because making big do uh, top doily is not easy. So if I use many small motifs, motifs um, with the same pattern, I thought it's uh, much easier to create. And uh, um, yes, and again, I used the uh, shadow. And uh, please remember the center of this design. I will explain why I used this, uh, the big uh, circle 
in the center and the eight kind of circular or round shape around. Yes, this is the close-up photo. Okay, next kind of doily is uh, I the tarp always get a lot of wrinkles when I fold and it's not easy to remove. And uh, once I tried to use iron, but if the temperature is really high, it shrinks. And I was so scared and I didn't want to damage the, the big top doily. So for a while I didn't use uh, tarp as material. And next I tried was pay, paper. And you know, origami. Origami is a Japanese traditional uh, art of folding paper. And, uh, but there is another word like uh, pretty similar to origami. It's, it's kirigami. Kiri is from cutting. So kirigami means cutting paper. And it's like making a snow, paper snow flake. So you fold paper first and cut and unfold. And I thought I could use this way. And the difference is I cut several places and glued together and made 3D, kind of 3D, doily like form. And this is my kind of, I don't know how to say invention or my way to make flat doily to three dimensional. And I joined this and um, I made like installation work, but for folding and uh, cutting, I needed to use very thin paper and I used very ordinary copy paper, but it is not strong enough. So next day, the doily or this paper cutting cannot uh, keep the form and uh, droopy. So now I'm using like laser cut so that I don't have to fold and uh, trace and look uh, cut the paper, I use laser cut and uh, uh, trying to make second version of this artwork. And uh, the title, I always think title, uh, the best title for each artwork. And the, the uh, title of this work is Descending the Nexus of Ancestors. So one strand is my uh, one family's like history. So, and uh, the, and the, in short, this is DNA. So this is, I think, pretty meaningful title. Okay, next is, okay, this is, I'm not very good at drawing, but this is my idea. I wanted to make like light, Doily put light in, inside of the uh, cylinder and uh, make like shadow and light doily on the floor. This is my original idea. And I tried, tried, and I cut many, uh, I made many like samples. And uh, I couldn't get nice result. And uh, one day I tried this way. This is like a silver, very shiny, like cinder in the center and the doily I got from my professor's wife. And I realized I need only the part and only the bottom. So I got the uh, basic idea and uh, cut, 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 cut many, 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 many uh, patterns and uh, I created uh, I don't know, more than 10 cylinders of this. And finally got a nice pattern and uh, I created this. And uh, yeah, it, it took really long time and, uh, but I really also really like, like 
not physical doily, but this is a uh, doily of light. And okay. So far, I have two designs, but I really want to make, make more. But it's not easy to get nice pattern on the floor. And this is the top view. And this is the, uh, another one. And the good thing was that I showed this piece only once, and that gallery space had white ceiling. So uh, I saw it, it was not very really clear, but I saw another doily on the ceiling, white ceiling, and it was unexpected result. Okay, so always I'm thinking what I really wanted to do with my artwork. And I found this word, not found, I created this word. When I showed the light doily, the title of my show was Shadows Through Circles. And this is a uh, shadow is not only the shadow I, uh, I create, but also shadows of ancestors. And the circle is not uh, only the circle of a doily, but circle means also the circle of life or life, cy life cycle, like circle. So this is kind of, kind of core part of my uh, art making or now or yeah okay so next is uh like a very simple pattern and i wonder what do you think about this pattern i thought it's it looks like a doily pattern since i i saw a kind of similar uh doilies so center uh, is a little bit bigger circle and surrounded by uh, eight smaller circles. And uh, okay, this is um, the pattern I showed in the beginning is um, my family crest and every family in Japan has family crest and it's like very simplified like pattern. Some uses like plant image, flower image or characters or just a geometric pattern. And uh, I searched how many this kind of uh, family crest exist and some site says about 3,000. Other site says 5,000. Another says 20,000. So I don't know how many exactly uh, we have this kind of design. And these are, everything is very old and the traditional. And this is a family of my kind of family design of my family crest. And where we use the family crest is mostly nowadays only on very formal kimono. So sometimes it, it's embroidered, sometimes it dyed, painted, and the front side two and the back side uh, three. So this is the basic way to use family crest nowadays. And uh, often I so the uh, doily, I was so surprised. Oh, it's like my family crest. And uh, um, I was so happy because I'm using like crochet uh, technique and making doilies. So I was so happy. I'm the person who need to use crochet and doily image. And I searched the meaning of my uh, family crest. And this is the origin of my family crest is this uh, mandala. 
mandala is a, a depicted pictureized buddhism world and the center part became my family quest and uh, yes but very strangely i thought it's related to buddhism but i also found this stained glass in downtown minneapolis and i was so surprised and it's christianity and buddhism so i thought this pattern is very um universal and when you make uh, doilies or when you crochet it's kind of meditative so i thought everything has kind of relationship in the deep part and this is my doily story and uh, since i used like uh, repeated generations and uh, the circle of life to make artwork i was really interested in water and i made water themed artwork so it's related to my original uh, thing and uh, i made this work and this is like human doily and it's a video piece um okay i asked the university of minnesota's uh, synchronized swimming team and made this video okay can can you yeah i asked uh, the swimmers to make formation different formations and the uh, a performance was taken from the flat platform of the diving and projected on the on the table Okay, so next uh, water related artwork is this. The idea is similar to the bone doily I showed in the beginning. And it's much bigger size. And uh, I used I miller, real glass miller is too dangerous to uh, use. So I used uh, miller finished stainless steel and the size of the uh, one sheet of the stainless steel is four feet by 10 feet so it's pretty big and uh, i invited to show my artwork at gas davis uh, college and uh, this is a mezzanine space and uh, i original idea was to use driftwood because it shows the years, many years, and also um, related to water and the white. So I wanted to use driftwood, and I was told the student will help me to collect driftwood from the nearby river. But on the day, nobody showed up. So I had to think, okay, what I can, I can use what I can use to make like a doily and the time was limited. I started this doily to make this doily the kind of night before the opening day. So I was so upset, but I found a material and created this doily. And please guess what I used. Only the front side is the real image, and the other uh, three are uh, the reflection. So you might know now. <clears throat> and this is a salt. I used salt, very normal salt. And uh, the time was really limited, and I didn't, I, thought I couldn't uh, start over. 
So, and I didn't have any idea of the pattern. So first I created the pattern <clears throat> by using like masking tape. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so I created this uh, pattern with masking tape and then I used a salt and uh, removing the tape and replaced with salt and use stick to remove or uh, to make like pretty sharp line. So the center, you, you see like white uh, color and that was already replaced with salt. And the other part is still masking tape. And I finished making this artwork on the day of uh, at 1.30 in the morning on the day of the opening. It was tough, but yeah, I, did my best and I was able to try it only one time, but I pretty satisfied with, with this result. And another water related uh, piece is snow. And this I used very kind of, I don't know if I call this uh, doily, but small, like one and a half inch size, like, uh, small crochet circle and joined and made many uh, <clears throat> so mobiles. So this snow piece has gentle movement. And <clears throat> this is not textile art, but I uh, started using plastic bottles because the bottom part has like flower like shape and I really like flower shape. So I once, once I used many uh, plastic bottles and just cut the bottom part. And this has also movement. This, uh, this has like four layers of different sizes of uh, bottom of the plastic bottles. And uh, I made 60 set of this. And uh, okay, I want to. So, and uh, I don't know how I can start. Yeah, this is a video, but this has. Mm, okay, I cannot, but this has pretty like gentle. Uh, surface of water like movement. Okay, this is another piece I used. I used the uh, bottom part of plastic bottles. And uh, <clears throat> water theme and the use of plastic material, this recycled plastic materials. Uh, let me, um, work on environmental uh, pieces. And I had a, a residency at South Dakota State University for one month. And I needed to, to have like exhibition at the end. So I had four weeks, but the last one week was just for setting that's a gallery space. And I really wanted to have one more piece. And this is kind of my last moment, like art piece. And I didn't know what I wanted to make, but I saw many plastic grocery bags. So I cut the plastic bags and joined and made these uh, flowers. And the title is Blooming, Blooming in Brookings, South Dakota. So my life as an artist was blooming. So this is the close up photo. And uh, yeah, water theme and uh, plastic bags uh, made me think environment. And I read an article that is 
very interesting for me. And it was um, about mushroom. Nowadays, plastic is a big problem, causing a big problem. And uh, for example, uh, oceans are contaminated by plastic or plastic bags. And the article said, mushrooms or fungus that can break down plastic was found in Amazon. And I thought, wow, it's great news. And inspired by the news, I created uh, these mushrooms. And uh, same as the former flowers, I cut the grocery bags and the crochet and made like nearly 50 mushrooms and planted on the ground and titled this, I wish I were the mushroom. So this mush mushroom want to become the useful mushroom, mushroom like in the uh, article. So this is the photo. I think I captured only 40 mushrooms in this photo. And it's so huge and, uh, and I really like showing this out, out, outside or outdoor. But once I showed this in the gallery space and the uh, gallery director was really uh, understanding and uh, I used hot glue and planted the mushrooms in the, in the gallery space. And I also liked this. And for applying for common thread at uh, the textile center, I needed to make it scale down. So I made, uh, I planted the mushrooms on the logs. And now this is shown in the gallery space textile center. And now what I want to do is I still want to use crochet techniques and explore what I could do and um, continue to think about environment and the plastic materials. And my new idea is this. I hope you can see. And the uh, center is the cap a cap of, from a bottle, Coke bottle, and the outside is the same as uh, before uh, the grocery bag. So I want to make something with this, but this has front side and the back side. So I don't know what I can do. And uh, I got this idea pretty long ago, but still don't know what, what I can do. But yeah, one of the simple ideas to make address but I'm thinking what I could can do. So this is my crochet and the doidy story for today. Thank you so much. Mayumi, thank you. I'm I'm jumping back in because I would like to open up the conversation or also your presentation to a conversation. Um, and if we could take down the screen share is great thank you um i'm going to invite audience members i think we have a small enough audience if you want you can unmute yourself and ask a question and it would actually be great if you turned your video on so that mayumi can actually see you when you're um communicating uh, otherwise, um, I'm going to go ahead and just start with a few comments about what I um, observed. And some of this is, of course, because I've known Mayumi for a while and we've talked about her work several times. So um, thank you for the presentation because I think, you know, every couple of minutes I said, oh, no, about this. Oh, now she's talking about this. So I. Um, appreciate the fact that you took us all the way from the fact that your use of the doily was initially an aesthetic decision in that very first image that you showed of the doilies inside the little bronze um, 
I almost thought they looked like ashtrays, but with the little bronze sculpture. Um, to moving into a discussion where you start to talk about thinking about um, content driven decisions with your work. So I thank you because I think you did a really great job as I was listening, talking about um, how the doily is such an important icon and such an important influence to the work that you have done throughout the last, I don't know, 15 years or so, maybe now longer than that, I think. Um, talk, you talked about everything from cultural research and equating the doily with the grandmother, um, moved us through the connections to Donald Judd. So I loved the um, examples that you related to other artists who many of us as fiber practitioners or uh, you know fiber lovers have even thought about the relationship to the work of Donald Judd, which I thought was really awesome. Um, and then to the desert landscape. So that sort of, that leads me to not so much a question, but if you could make, maybe make a few more comments about what comes up in my mind is, is there or was there a significance of the doily in Japanese culture before you came to the United States? And did you, was there any, besides the, the learning to crochet from your grandmother, was there a connection to the doily as an icon in Japanese culture before you started working with it? Because at the end of your presentation, you did a great, I mean, it was awesome. The reiterations and the, the screens that you showed with the multiple relationships of what, you know, different icons that are the doily and then the family crests, the, all the, the inspiration of the Japanese family crests and their reference to doily, that seems like a, you know, that's something that's just come up for you maybe in the last few years. So if you could talk about um, the doily maybe outside of, of, um, I'm gonna say outside of American culture, if there are any references to that for you. And then uh, talk a little bit about how you use the word decoration a lot and the doily as a decorative element. And, and I put that in quotes. And um, because I think the conversations about the word decorative in contemporary art, I'm going to say they're always suspect, you know, decoration, sometimes decoration's good and sometimes it's a movement and sometimes decoration is fluff and decoration is important. So if you can talk a little bit about how decoration as an artistic construct has changed for you over the years, that would be a great start. So I know I, I know I just said a lot, but go ahead and, and talk, speak to any of the things that I just went through. Okay, thank you so much. Um, like I said, my grand, grandmother taught me how to crochet. And uh, I think of course it's from uh, Western culture and uh, in the US, everybody says, like I said, it's grandma's image. And in Japan, yes, I learned how to crochet from my grandmother, but it's not only grandmother stuff. Everybody who wanna do crochet, they do. And uh, um, so it's very casual, like craft, craft, uh, technique and uh, I think nowadays crochet is not very really, um, popular or common to make artwork or to make like textile art art um, in in the US but in Japan it's like craft and everybody does so I was a little surprised when I came to the US, uh, the dolly's grandma stuff. Oh, okay. But we do, everybody does in Japan, crochet and mostly like making, of course, uh, beautiful doilies and also uh, like uh, cardigans or sweaters. 
crochet, I think, wearable, uh, very useful, like, way. And uh, yeah, not, not crochet string or thread, but mostly, I think, yarn and creating, like, sweaters is, I think, a common way. And uh, yes, uh, the word decorate. And actually, I was told Miami don't use the word <laughs> from my professor. <laughs> but for me, it's decorate. And uh, I think it sounds very crafty or very light or cheap. But I, my language, my words are limited, and I don't know what what I could say. So if you can give me a good way to say, I'm very happy, I really appreciate. So mm, contemporary art, like craft is like put aside. And but what I can do is crafty work because this is, it, it's my style and also my origin. And I really like make, making something with my hand. So craft is important, but what I need to think is how I can use the craft technique or something, the techniques, something uh, to create something can be applied to contemporary art. So that is the little difficult point, but also interesting point. And I'm exploring how could use the technique to make contemporary artwork. Is that enough? I don't know. Oh yeah, you know, I, I think so. We're, we'll just have a conversation until anybody else jumps in with a with different yep. sort of question. But I think, I'm curious if you could talk a little bit about the pieces you did. I'm thinking about the video of the synchronized swimmers. Yes. Where, you know, something as, I'm going to say almost disparate, as a team of synchronized swimmers coming together to form a pattern and how that, that idea for that project grew from this evolution of a doily in your studio practice over time. Mm. Do you, I, I can't think of that work using the word decoration as part of my vocabulary. So, I mean, I think it's, a, it's, it's something that maybe you can think about in terms of using the word decorate. I think, I think, it, it, decoration has always been difficult, particularly in the field of textiles and fiber art in the context of contemporary art, um, because it is one of those words that has an association that is easily criticized. And so I'm just curious how you would maybe describe the work of the synchronized swimmers, because I don't think that that piece has much of anything to do with decoration, even though it may have evolved out of this whole, um, this whole development in your studio practice. I'm just curious how you would describe that piece to someone who wasn't maybe familiar with your other work. Hmm. And that's kind of a challenge to you, but I'm, I'm curious because when this was great, we got to see this wonderful, like really comprehensive you walking us through your in, your studio practice over the last you know 15 years. And so it makes a lot of sense to see you go from this and this and, and certain projects are explorations of ideas that just, um, how do I say it? That, um, that just um, sort of naturally evolve from whatever you had done previous, but when you make a presentation to someone and you're only allowed to show 10 or 12 images of your work and you try to connect the work to, what, to whatever everybody's looking at, I'm just curious about how you would 
talk about some of the pieces that don't necessarily fit into ideas about decoration. Um, and I'm gonna say there, um, someone commented about decoration. Decoration is in relation to conspicuous consumption. Hmm. Um, I don't know if that has that resonates at all. Hmm. But the, the conversation about decoration is an interesting one. And I know you said, you know, it's a vocabulary issue for you. It's mm -hmm. like, what other words do you choose? But I think that maybe the conversation is about decoration and how your work embraces or subverts it. Because I find that some of the pieces that you've done, if I can use the word subversive again, very much subvert our ideas of decoration. When you talk about, you know, interacting with the physical, with the human physical body um, and, you know, doing these reiterations of pattern and design that's, that really move into the world of ideas and um, conceptual work and installation, um, you're moving far, on, on one level, you, you're moving far outside of the field of what most people think of our textiles and fiber art. So, um, yeah, um, the video piece, synchronized yeah. seamers video piece was created uh, at the same time of uh, like floating big doilies. Mm -hmm. So, and I really wanted to use the theme of water Mm -hmm. Yes, that is the point. And also, uh, in the beginning, I said my background was physical education. Mm -hmm. So I really like the, I really interest in human bodies and also movement. And so, yeah, not only making like, uh, sculptural, sculptural work on the pedestal. I really want to add, like, if possible, like movement. And uh, uh, it's another reason. And uh, uh, water, and uh, yeah, if I ask them to wear white, like, bathing suit, I thought, yeah, I imagined I could make interesting artwork, but there were many problems. <laughs> oh, one was the bottom of the diving pool had lines. So I bought blue tarp, again tarp, but blue one, and put the tarp on the bottom as a background. So uh, I like the blue color so much and the blue and the white can make good contrast. So it's uh, uh, the reason I asked them to wear white uh, bathing suit. And uh, actually I bought the, it was not bath bathing suit, but it was like bustier. And I also bought uh, white pantyhose. So, and the bustier like outfit had a lacy image, lacy pattern. So everything was related to doily. And, uh, but the basic part was water theme and uh, movement. And I just thought if I could create like movement, human doily in water, it will be beautiful and it will be interesting. That's the beginning part. And uh, um, I don't know about the decoration, but another word I know is embellish, embellish. And it's kind of same. So uh, I don't know what kind of word I could use in contemporary uh, art. Well, as I hear you talking about your work, you 
you're very careful and thoughtful in your aesthetic decision-making process and your your work is still i'm going to say heavily driven by your sense of aesthetic and 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 things that you that are aesthetic to you and that are that feel beautiful and convey those sensibilities um I want to switch gears, and this is a this is related. Your new work with the mushrooms feels very different, and there's a there's a you're talking much more about the cycle of a cycle of waste and about reuse and about environment. And though your former pieces, many of them involved the your response to water and your response to place, your response to living in Minnesota, and perhaps the mushroom pieces also respond to that. Um, I'm just, if you could talk a little bit more about the decision to use a mushroom as a symbol. And I know you talked about the research paper that you read. So it's really interesting. You sort of seems like you stumble, like many of us do as artists on these I'm going to call it a serendipitous moment where something comes to you and it helps make sense of all this other stuff you've been thinking about. And so you came across this article and it started talking about how there was this biomass that could eat waste or whatever it was. And so I find it fascinating, you know, when art, when artists get to these points where the light bulb turns on, but I'm curious about the mushrooms and how your message to your audience will be could be strengthened or conveyed if the audience doesn't know about the article because it seems i'm going to say it seems like you're moving into a more a much more obscure um is much more obscure ideas in terms of how you're connecting your sense of aesthetics and what you make to this idea about the environment so because you know you're talking about the cultural research you did about the doily and when i see the mushrooms made out of the plastic bags i almost i'm going to say on a tangent here i get this sense that it's it's a it's a different response to crochet and if you can follow what i'm going to say in my mind, there's this sort of thematic thing going on where the doily, the actual actual doily is this very, sort. I'm gonna say this is very Western, maybe you would even call it European, this lace making, this, it's a, that's what the sort of cultural information is behind the doily. And then you talked about the use of crochet as um, using yarn as a way that, again, maybe American culture uses crochet to make sweaters and to make clothing and to make garments. And when I look at the uh, what I am going to, um, I'm gonna say stick my neck out and just um, generalize and say the, the um, Japanese, what's been so popular in crochet for the last you know decade or more is the arumigami the very small little crocheted playful um, creatures and figures. And so your mushrooms to me feel like they almost fit into that genre of crochet. So I'm just curious about how you're thinking about moving forward with your work in a way that continues to, continues to put across a, the very sort of conceptual and um, that environmental impetus that's behind your work now? Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, first, I wanna talk about a little bit about the, my style, not style, the uh, atmosphere or space I create. And uh, I think it, I didn't know this, but I think it's from our culture. And uh, for example, if you visit Japanese garden, there is Japanese, yeah, very quiet space. You can feel or you can experience. 
not just see, but you can feel the atmosphere. And uh, I really like that kind of calm and the quiet space. So I also want to create that kind of uh, healing space or calm place. And not only for me, but also I believe viewers can viewers uh, like the quiet uh, space. And uh, but I didn't know it from my culture, but I now I feel it's part of our Japanese culture, like very simple, but kind of deep and the quiet, yes, uh, like Zen like, I don't know. Uh, and I limit on purpose, I limit color to create my artwork, white, of course, white. And also I use silver and the transparent, like plastic bottles and the blue, because I like blue and I heard blue LED light has like healing power. I heard so, so I use blue and also like orange. I don't know why orange, but I crochet like it's called amigurumi, but it's like teddy bear by crocheting um, uh, yarn and I made artwork. It's not just a teddy bear, it has meaning, very interesting meaning, but the color I chose was orange. Yeah, the idea was, okay, it, it's long story. So, but anyway, I needed to use like orange color and uh, unexpectedly the first, my artwork I used uh grocery bags uh from Hy-Vee and the plastic bag had orange colored like logo so i use orange yes and uh, okay sorry this is my like way how to make how, how i wanna what kind of space i wanna create and uh, what else i I, I'm sorry, I forgot. And uh, okay, uh, mushroom. Okay. Um, since childhood, I saw cute stuff, so many cute stuff. So I thought, if I, after reading the uh, article, if I can create mushrooms, I thought it's cute. It's it's one of the reason, but. Um, more important point of the artwork is um, it's related to environment. Environment, and uh, when I got the idea, I didn't think very deeply. I just thought the news was great, and I used the crochet technique with. A mushroom, but later I found the meaning of the mushroom piece. The reason I really, I really like the idea of breaking down uh, the fungus that can break break down uh, plastic was because um, it's the fungus or mushroom can put the plastic in the recycling system. So life, no, the circle of life. So if, if the plastic bags are thrown, that bag cannot go back to the circle of life. But if somehow the plastic can be break down, the, the plastic can go back to the circle of life. I thought the point is important for the mushroom uh, piece. Not only from the uh, article and created uh, mushrooms, but it's related. I didn't notice, but I found the meaning. It related my 
uh, thing. Uh, cycle of life and repeat its life and the mushroom piece or fungus could give the chance to go back to the cycle of life. So that is the point of the mushroom piece. And uh, I used doily, crochet, and also used water as the kind of sub thing because uh, they are very closely connected. And then I used plastic bottles because it's also recycled. So the basic idea, mortality or cycle of life, repeated generations uh, came with water, then used plastic materials. So everything is in my like route. How, for me, it's not very subtle. And for me, it's not very different work. Everything is in, in my art world and everything is connected. And I'm not sure if I could get a good idea for making like uh, environmental work. And I might go back and forth. And everything is, I think, my artwork because I'm a only one person and creating several different uh, pieces, but the bottom or core part is the same. So that is my answer. I don't know if it's okay or acceptable. <laughs> I think that that was a perfect wrap up to your presentation because we've seen throughout the presentation how your work connects from one thing to the next and the next and it circles back on itself and then it moves another direction then I think you just did a really beautiful job of explaining how that circularity has always been part of your work and part of your essence I would say as an artist so um I haven't we didn't receive any other questions oh. <laughs> through the chat but you know sometimes that's a Okay, you just leave people with a lot of information to think about, a lot to think about, and a lot to digest. Um, and I just want to thank everyone for joining us today, and thank yes. you particularly, Mayumi, for giving us your time and coming um, to Textile Center to do this presentation for, for our audience and let us get to know about you and your work um, a little bit more. So thank you so much. Oh, you are so welcome. So, so with that, we're going to um, end the Zoom session for the day and thank everyone again for joining us. And we will be um, sending out information through our Textiles on the Town newsletter about any upcoming Art Speaks events. The next one will be related to artists who are working um, in a sort of a social practice modality uh, who are participating in our Common Thread show. So please come and see Mayumi's work in Common Thread through October 16th. Yep. And and give me one minute. Oh, yes. <laughs> and uh, I really want to say thank you to everybody who joined me today. And uh, I hope you had a good time. And uh, I'm going to have a show at White Bear Center for the Art this fall. The opening is October 7th, and I don't know, I'm so busy, and I don't have many new artwork, but some of the pieces from my pre presentation will be shown, and uh, I don't know how to show my mushrooms, but I really want to show the mushrooms too, the bigger uh, space and mm -hmm. any. Yes. Okay, thank you. Oh, and you're welcome. We will be sure to share an announcement um, with our audience through our textiles on the town newsletter on your behalf um, to get folks up to see your exhibition. So thank you very much for letting us know. Okay, with that, um, we're going to close for the afternoon. Everyone have a great rest of your day. And thank you again for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you.